Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and with what could be one of the biggest risks to investors in 2022, runaway inflation and how to be ready for it in your portfolio. In this video, I'll show you how to find the best stocks to beat inflation and an easy stock screener to find them. I'll then reveal the seven stocks to watch that can not only survive, but thrive as inflation heats up. You know, we can't get started though without that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your time to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I'll be using the Improving Margin Stock Screen on Stock Card for this list, a special screener of stocks I helped put together for inflation investing. I'll leave a link to Stock Card in the description below. Click through and follow our 2022 Bowtie Nation portfolio to get notifications whenever I buy or sell from the list. As a special bonus, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for all you out there in the community. Use the promo code Bowtie Nation. that's all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Now we'll get started on that list next, but I wanted to show you what I'm looking for in these inflation stocks, and it really comes down to one simple measure, one ratio that proves their inflation fighting credentials. The gross margin is the percentage of revenue left over after paying production costs like materials, packaging, and some direct labor to make that product. So this is a profitability measure on how well management is doing generating profits against those higher costs for materials. And now Stock Card or our most investing apps is gonna do the calculation for you, but I wanna show you an example because it's gonna help explain this and why it's so important. We see the income statement here for Apple and we see it booked over $365 billion in revenue over the last 12 months. Now after spending almost 213 billion in cost of revenue, those supplies and the other costs, it had a gross profit of $152.8 billion left. Now that means the gross margin here for Apple was 41.8% over the last year, which is higher than it has been in the past. Now this tells us that Apple is becoming more efficient at turning that revenue into profits. And while supply costs and other expenses might be going up with that inflation, the, the company has been able to raise its own prices and increase its sales enough to more than cover those costs. That's something not all companies are gonna be able to do and it proves that competitive advantage for Apple and, and just another reason to invest in this Cupertino giant. So that's what we're gonna be looking for with stocks in this list. Companies that even though their own costs might be rising with inflation, they are able to increase their prices and sales without losing customers. True inflation protected stocks. First on our list, Tyson Foods, ticker TSN, the largest US producer of processed chicken and beef with 86% of its revenue in North America. I put some of the numbers I'm looking for in a spreadsheet here, and we see Tyson has grown sales by 5.5% pace over the last three years, which is pretty good for a mature market like meat processors. But look at these margins. It's been able to add to its gross margin by more than a percent and boost its operating margin by nearly 2% over the last few years. Now that's important because we saw this whole industry of meat processors get hit really hard on the COVID pandemic. It was nearly impossible to keep those factories open because you just can't socially distance meat workers. So to see Tyson even be able to hold up on its profitability is a good sign. Now this is also where we see a lot of the wage pressure over the next year, so be watching on this operating margin as well. Shares trade for just 0.68 times on a price to sales basis, which is about half the sector average, and the PE ratio is close to that 10 times cutoff that value investors like Warren Buffett likes to see. Now the target price of about $91 a share is only 4.2% higher from here, but, but that's on top of the 2.1% dividend yield, and this is one of those stable cash flow stocks. Now the buckle, ticker BKE, so a casual apparel retailer, and I wanted to get at least one retail name on the list because this is where we're seeing a lot of those inflation pressures. Now understand, any company with a lot of lower wage labor is gonna be facing those wage pressures the most, and retailers have already been hit on those input costs through the higher materials and transportation costs. So where this is especially important to be watching those profitability measures. And the company has done a great job with an 11.5% rate of sales growth and really strong margin improvement. The buckle has improved its gross margin to almost 50% and has added 10% to that operating margin over the past three years. Shares trade for 8.8 .8 times on a price to earnings basis, which is well under the average for consumer discretionary stocks, but, but right about where a lot of those retailers are trading. The price to sales ratio of 1.7 times is about average for the sector. The average analyst target price of $60 a share is nearly 45% higher from here, the highest upside potential in our list. And we're just getting started on our list of inflation stocks, but how bad could inflation get in 2022? And consumer prices are up more than 6% over the last year, but the market is really only forecasting inflation of 2.9% annually over the next five. This break-even rate is the market's expectation for inflation. It's calculated by the interest rate on inflation-protected tips minus the rate on treasuries. 
Now you can see it's at a decade high, but the market is still saying it doesn't think inflation is gonna be as bad as it's been. Now I've been arguing that inflation would be higher than expected since early last year, and it seems the market has finally come around to that story, but it's still not pricing all of it in. Yeah, we probably won't have 6% inflation throughout the year, but there are still some real long-term pressures like higher rent and wages that are gonna keep inflation above 4% for this year and maybe even next. You need to be ready for this, investing in stocks that can beat inflation. Nutrien, ticker NTR, is one I've been following for a while, the world's largest fertilizer producer after a 2018 merger between Potash Core and Agrium. Nutrien controls 20% of the global market for fertilizer. That's really an amazing leadership position. And, and while that market has been volatile lately, the long-term demand picture is still very strong. Besides population growth, more people are eating meat globally, and the only way we raise crop yields to the point where we can satisfy demand for ag products is, is by using more fertilizer. Now, like we saw with Tyson, it's a mature market, so that 6.9% annualized sales growth is actually really good. Nutrien has been able to boost both its gross and operating margins by about 3% as well. Now, this one is a little more expensive on those price multiples. It's trading for 1.7 times sales, which is about one and a half times more than the sector average, but I think this is just that reflection of the strong market share control the company has on its industry. The average analyst target of $80.64 a share is about 6% higher, along with the 2.5% dividend. So this is another one that might not make you rich, but it's a good safety play with some great cash flow. Next on our list, Sanderson Farms, ticker SAFM, is another processor of chicken, though quite a bit smaller than Tyson that we looked at earlier. Sanderson has grown its revenue by almost 8% annually over the last three years, which is really strong for its industry, and more than 2% better than Tyson. Its gross and operating margins are both higher than the larger competitor, and it's almost doubled that gross profitability over the period. Now again, that meat processing industry is one of the hardest hit on inflation through input prices as well as the wages, so to see the gross profitability nearly double on this is a great sign for Sanderson. And this one is in value territory as well, with a PE ratio of 9.4 times, or about half the average for the sector on consumer staples. The average analyst target of $202 per share only leaves about 7% upside on top of that 1% dividend, but this is a best of breed company in its industry. Our first tech stock in the list, Lumentum Holdings, ticker LITE, produces optical components for the telecom industry, as well as lasers for manufacturing. The company has produced nearly 12% sales growth annually in the last three years and added more than 10% to its gross profitability. Now, maybe some of you out there aren't the numbers nerd like I am, but this is really exciting to see growth this much, growth of 12% annually, and be getting more profitable at the same time. And not only do you get that profitability with Lumentum, but the company is also expanding into new optical applications and 3D sensors, which could be an even stronger growth market. And we could see profitability level off as it spends more to develop those products, but it could add a lot of growth to this stock. As more of a growth stock than our prior picks, the valuation multiples here are gonna be higher. For Lumentum, you're gonna be paying about 20 times on that price to earnings basis, which is actually a little cheaper than most of the companies in the tech sector. That price to sales ratio of 4.7 times is about average though for this kind of growth. The average target price of $112 a share is only 5% higher, but I don't think the analysts are measuring that potential growth in the 3D sensors yet. So I think, I think there's a lot more upside potential in this stock. But we've still got two of my favorite inflation fighting stocks to highlight, but understand we're not just picking these stocks on their gross margin alone. And increasing profitability on sales is important, but we also want to make sure these stocks are hitting those other fundamentals that we watch for here on the channel. And one of the most important of these is the operating margin, easily my favorite ratio for investing. Now, this is the operating profits, so not that gross profits, but what's left over after that, after taking out wages, marketing, and other operational costs. What's left over of sales after this divided by that total revenue. And this is just as important because it's gonna show you which companies are able to keep up their profitability even as wages head higher. Next on our stock list, LG Display, ticker LPL, one of the leaders in pretty much everything electronics display for, from computers, TVs, and smartphones. Now, LG has a really strong brand and is always innovating in its space. So I think that gives it a lot of pricing power to pass on those inflation costs, those, those higher costs onto customers without losing sales. We haven't quite seen the wage pressure for LG since it employs higher wage workers already and, and has a global workforce, but the materials inflation has been there and the company is really handling it well. Sales are up at a 5.4% annualized pace, which I'd like to see that a little higher, but, but improvement in these profitability measures has really made up for it. 
The company added 6% to its gross margin over the last few years, despite higher production costs, and took its operating profit from nearly zero to 8%. And you know, I actually had to do a double take when I saw the price multiples on this one. LPL is trading for just 0.3 times on a price to sales basis and less than six times on price to earnings. Now, consumer electronics trade for a lower price multiple than a lot of tech stocks, but, but the average is around 0.9 times on price to sales. So this is still a third as expensive as other stocks in its industry. The average target price here of $11.30 a share is 12% higher, but, but still well under the $12.30 each the stock has traded for over the last year. And, and I think we could see that again if we have a strong consumer sales in 2022. SAIA Inc, ticker SAIA, is a trucking and logistics firm throughout the US and one of the most important industries to watch for those profitability measures. Now, trucking isn't necessarily seeing a lot of the raw materials inflation that we see in consumer staples, but, but the industry is facing an historic shortage of workers. That means we really want to pay attention to the operating margin because that's going to include the effect of those wages on profitability. And here we see that SAIA has been able to add nearly 5% to its operating profitability over the last three years, all while growing sales by 9% a year. Now, I would keep an eye on that operating margin just to make sure it doesn't start slipping, but, but one catalyst to watch for in trucking is the adoption of autonomous vehicles. The industry is already testing level four and level five self-driving trucks, which could mean completely self-driving. And I think we get there within the next few years. That could be a profit boom for companies like SAIA and, and driver costs are about a third of the operating expenses. Now, SAIA is quite a bit more expensive than its competitors in the space at 4.2 times on a price to sales basis. And that's almost a gross stock territory for valuation. So you might want to wait for those valuations to come down a little bit before adding a big position. The average analyst target of $336 a share is 7% higher after last week's sell-off. So, so I think the stock is coming down a little bit to a more reasonable valuation and could be ready to buy real soon. Check out our 2022 portfolio on stock card or click on the video to the right to see the 10 ETFs every investor owns, the top exchange traded funds investors are buying. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.